Oh yeah, so the first thing you learn about self-driving cars is they're actually extremely boring. I'm not like doing anything, you know? Yeah. Look back at you, don't do that, watch your rug, guys. I did. Is it gonna complain? The driver is it complaining yet? Yes. Look how chill this is, right? Like our slogans make driving chill. We really try to, we really try to like optimize for that. Like none of the Python is the safety code. The safety code's all in C, it's got great unit tests around it. Um, so, in cities, how well do we work? We'll see. But look at how we've like moved a little bit out there, but not too much, right? Like really like where a human would position themselves on the road. It's complaining. It says there's someone in the middle seat who's not going to strap the middle seat belt. That's why it was strapped. So this is comma two running on the Pulse Desire branch. Uh, and let's just make sure I can, maybe I can sweep. Um, so we'll go for a little drive around to the highway. Do you guys working also on the autopilot in the uh, in the city or no? Well, I can show you what it'll do. So we don't uh, we don't block uh, where it can engage or not. Uh, so we'll just uh, well let's, let's let's get the highway first. We'll do that demo and then we'll uh, do a bit of city. But yeah, so the first thing you learn about self-driving cars is they're actually extremely boring. boring. Um, when it works well, it's super boring. When it doesn't work well, it's exciting, but you know, that's, you know, uh, not good. Uh, so as it gets better, these demos get more and more boring. Mm. Mm. Um, so the Corolla is a out of the box. It's the best car we have. Um, but a torque modded Civic is slightly better because the Corolla has some issues with the, uh, the rate limiter. these demos and like we learned this quick doing demos for the press is when it works it's boring as shit <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah so that's I'm not, the exciting part i guess you know what i mean like i'm not like doing anything you know yeah look back at you don't do that watch your rug guys I is, it is it gonna go complain? the driver monitor it it's not, not yet, yet. Not yet which is kind of probably a bad thing there you go oh there you go oh 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to make the DM too aggressive because if it's too aggressive, it'll just piss people off. Uh, we'll try closing my eyes. We'll see if it detects that. Watch the road, guys. I'm waiting for Tesla to update their uh, yes. activation oh, yeah. for the camera. Appeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we've had no really bad accidents yet, but there have been a few where drivers fall asleep. Um, so it turns out that like one in 20 drivers has fallen asleep in the last 30 days while they're driving. Super wow. scary. Uh, yeah, are oh, you waiting for Tesla to update their DM? They'll never do it. And the reason why is um, they don't have infrared LEDs. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking that the uh, camera's uh, infrared sensitive uh, and that the display <laughs> has enough glow uh, to show some light on the driver, but probably not. Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> um, we, we know this. We know this from experience. Um, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, no one's actually seen an image produced from that camera. Right there. Really? Yeah, that's what I wanted to get them today, too. Mm. Let's just uh, let's go in here. Beautiful automatic lane change. We're going to integrate real soon with the blind spot monitor. Nice. Uh, wow, automatic lane change has gotten so much better. Yo, Pulse Desire is sick. Uh, Pulse Desire, we used to put in, we used to constantly say lane change, lane change, lane change, lane change, lane change. And now we just say lane change once. And that's why it's so much more chill. Um, um, all right, we'll go for the demo where it might actually mess up. <laughs> this, and when you're on highways like this, it's just 
never makes mistakes. Unless some driver does something like really stupid. It's really smooth. Um, yeah, it's smoother than autopilot. Um, the upside is it's smooth. The downside is it's uh, not as tight. Mm -hmm. So things that do require tight maneuvers, it won't do. I really like that we disengage on gas. All right, so like, you want to see it mess up? You're thinking it's gonna mess up because it uh, goes over the limits for because it goes over the torque limits. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't know. Sometimes there's model failures. We'll see what it does on this merge up here. Um, we're not great at merges yet. Our, our longitudinal policy just isn't great. But we're not gonna have a problem. Like if there's a car like right there, kind of cutting in, and it doesn't detect it as a lead, it'll accelerate into it. Um, so just scenarios you gotta watch for. But uh, I I'm doing nothing. used to be more aggressive on the accelerator. Well, so at first it wasn't aggressive on the accelerator at all. And then we had people complain uh, that it wasn't aggressive on the accelerator. So we had aggressive on the accelerator. And then we had people complain about their fuel mileage. <laughs> so uh, we reverted a lot of the accelerator aggressiveness. We're still kind of aggressive in stop and go traffic, but like that, like get on and get in front of somebody, it won't do. Um, autopilot's way more aggressive on the accelerator, but when you have an electric car, uh, you can be. You think, you think so? Yeah. But you don't feel it as much because it's an electric power vehicle. No, it's not even yeah. that you don't feel it. I feel less compared to this. Look at how chill this is, right? Like our slogans make driving chill. We really try to, we really try to like optimize for that. Um, you know, it's just driving is this, uh, I just drove a Model 3 for, for uh, 1,400 miles on a road trip, probably about 1,000 on an autopilot. And this is the first time I'm driving open pilot in, in a couple of weeks. And it's it's a different experience. Like autopilot feels like it's aggressively keeping you in the center of the road. And like, it's like a, you've got a machine and it's like, you know, um, you know, maybe like, you know, I think of like BMW slogan, like the ultimate driving machine. I mean, that's what like autopilot feels like. Mm, a little bit of that wobble there, yeah. but that's not great. We gotta, we gotta fix that. Um, it's not like terrible. Like it, it doesn't split the difference anymore. It used to split the difference and take you right to the middle. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's just get over here. We'll do a second automatic lane change in behind this car. Nice job, open pilot. Yeah. A bit. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Uh, yeah, for a system that competes with the uh, autopilot, it does really well. Yeah. It's, it's just, it, it's so much more of a autopilot really like, you know, Tesla talks all the time about like full self driving, full self driving, full self driving. We don't do that. Um, we embrace the fact that it's an assistant. All right, so I'm gonna have to take control here because we actually don't want to get off at 6th Avenue. This will end up in Hillcrest. All right, and still, when you've got to do maneuvers like this, it's, uh, it's still all you. Um, I haven't tried the full self-driving stuff. Like Tesla might be able, can Tesla do that? Like what I just did there? Not that well. Not that well? Mm -hmm. So we got lane changes around corners, all automatic. Um, and you're never gonna get nagged as long as you are paying attention to the road. That's cool. Um, and you watch me both look away and close my eyes and you saw I call me both times. So it is uh, definitely uh, monitoring me. So this stuff's actually way harder than it looks. You look and you're like, oh, this is a normal turn. Yeah, it's really easy to read, but look at the bank of the road, right? Turning seats, steering limit. Yeah. A heads up that it might mess up here. Um, a lot of times when we give that warning, we should we should actually really quantify that, like what our percent of false positives and true positives is on that. We don't want to um, alert people too much, but at the same time, if there's like really any chance that it's going to mess up, we want to we want to make sure the driver is uh, engaged. Uh, also, our torque limit is so much lower than Tesla's. Like, it scares me to keep my hands off the wheel sometime for autopilot because it might just jerk it. That's never. Uh, that's all. That's all enforced by the panda. It's not even done by like none of the Python is the safety code. The safety code's all in C. It's 
got great unit tests around it, and we, we limit the ramp up of torque, so it can never uh, jerk the wheel, and that's why I'm so confident having my hands off. Like, it's not to say that it doesn't mess up, but when it does mess up, it's a chill reach out and turn, not a sh you know. <laughs> Those are really I thought the torque limits were by in that car, like the manufacturer. They are, but we do additional. Uh, we don't actually. You can use the max torque of the Corolla, but we, it takes uh, about two seconds to ramp up to full torque. Um, so we we put additional safety restrictions in front of Toyota. Um, we don't put additional safety restrictions in front of Honda because the Honda torque is so crappy to begin with <laughs> that we're like, there's no way, you know, it's going to be fine. All right, so now we're entering a little bit of stop and go. Um, let's just get over here. Uh, it's an assistant, so we don't disengage on steering. Uh, but unlike autopilot, we do disengage on uh, on gas. I can tell you're pretty familiar with where it disengages or where the... I've driven. Yeah. 10,000 miles with it now. I'm actually gonna go over here. Um, so this turn uh, exceeds what the torque limit can do, especially if I'm taking it at 50 miles an hour. I think that's one thing that Autopilot does well. It has the, the miles from its users driven to take those hard turns. We can do it too, it's a safety thing. Gotcha. It's, it's, not a, it's not a model thing, our model predicts the turn, great. Um, the problem is, well, if you allow high torques, mm -hmm. right? If your policy is to allow high torques when the model says high torque is okay, then, uh, well, what if the model says high torque is okay and it's like not? <laughs> um, so, in cities, how well do we work? We'll see. This is where we're, I think we are comfortably better than autopilot. Mm. I think autopilot's better at hard turns. I think autopilot's way better at merging. We do almost nothing for merging. But when you're in scenarios like this, where it's kind of like subtle maneuvering, we, we, we blow them out of the water. Um, whereas autopilot's like, oh, there's a lane over there. Oh, let me move over there. Oh, there's a lane over there. Let me move over there. I think their sounds are more pleasant than ours too. <laughs> uh, so like look at look at the maneuvering through i mean these are straight intersections so they're not that tricky but look at how we've like moved a little bit out there but not too much right like really like where a human would position themselves on the road does this vehicle have uh, radar returns yep yep and you integrate those mm -hmm. we cool. do fusion nice but yeah i mean this is this is the tricky stuff Look at look at how it just look at how it moved like a little bit there, and it's so subtle. Um, to like put you in between where the parked cars and where the oh man, and this isn't even the efficient net yet. Hmm. Oh, I forgot how good this was. Yeah, we've been 30, 32 miles per gallon with the new longitudinal policy. It went down to like twenty eight. <laughs> cool. Wow. Thanks, George. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll do one more.